In this video, I want to talk about using the epsilon delta definition of a limit to verify that the limits are correct. So let's look at this statement here. It says the limit as x approaches 2 of the function 3x plus 1 is equal to 7. Okay, and let's look at a quick graph so that this whole statement can make some sense. And what this graph says is that uh, as we travel along this function, we're, we're interested in what's happening at x equals 2, okay? So as we travel across the graph from the left side, as we approach 2 from the left, and as we approach 2 from the right, the question is, is what y value are we approaching? And that answer is 7, okay? And so that's what a limit is, okay? Um, it's wanting to know as you approach the x value from the left and right, what's the y value, right? And this one's pretty easy to do because if I just want to figure out what this is, I can just do direct substitution and I get, you know, 3 times 2 plus 1, and that's going to give us 6 plus 1, which gives us 7, okay? And, but what we want to do is we want to use this concept of the epsilon delta definition to verify that 7 is actually the answer. So let's take a look at that. Now, these are all the important parts of our delta epsilon definition, okay? And notice that I've color-coded these so that uh, x minus a, a, your a value is 2, your function is 3x plus 1, and your limit value is 7. Now, the only thing that we don't know is we don't know delta and we don't know epsilon, and that's okay because we can figure that out uh, from using this information here. So then what this means is that as we approach 2 on our x value, we're going to be within a certain value within the value delta, okay? Then that leads us into saying that the function value or the limit value will be somewhere within epsilon. All right, so let's take a quick look at the graph again to show you exactly what that means. And so as we look at this graph, what we're saying is, is that between a certain range of values for delta, all right, around 2, it will guarantee that we will get uh, within a certain range of epsilon that will give us a value of 7. Okay, so now let's actually do the algebra involved to figure out and show that the limit value is actually 7. So now when I go through the process of verifying, what I want to do is I want to use this part first and work backwards. All right, so let's write this out and we'll solve this, uh, in a, or this absolute value inequality for x. And so when I do this, my first step is to drop my absolute value symbols and write negative epsilon is less than 3x plus 1 minus 7 is less than positive epsilon. All right, so let's clean this up. Uh, 1 minus 7 is going to give us 6, so we've got 3x minus 6 is less than epsilon but greater than negative epsilon. Uh, and then what we want to do is... Uh, solve this equation for x. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides, or all three sides rather, and we're going to get uh, uh, epsilon, or 6 minus epsilon is less than 3x uh, is less than uh, epsilon plus 6. Okay, the next step that we want to do is divide everything by 3, all right? Um, and so then at this point, we get uh, 2 minus epsilon over 3 is less than x, which is less than uh, epsilon over 3 plus 2. Now, the interesting thing here is that um, the, the, you know, that's just solving for x, okay? What I then want to do is move, is, is, is get my epsilon terms by themselves. So I want to get rid of this 2 here and this 2 here. And I do that by then subtracting 2, okay? Minus 2, minus 2. And for each of these, they're going to cancel out. But then we get this. We get negative epsilon over 3 is less than x minus 2, 
which is less than epsilon over three. Now, at this point, I want to then turn this back into an absolute value inequality. And I would say the absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon over three. Now, why I'm doing this is because I'm starting here with this epsilon uh, absolute value inequality statement. And the interesting thing is that this piece here matches up exactly with this piece here. So then what I've created is I've created that my delta value is equal to epsilon over three. But at this point, we're not done. And what I want to do is now use this information here, knowing that my delta is epsilon over three and choose that to work backwards to what we originally had. So let's jump in and do that. And let's do that here. So let's say uh, to solve this absolute value inequality, and we're just going to go backwards and pretty much do the exact same steps and say that negative epsilon over three is less than x minus two, less than epsilon over three. Now at this point, um, what I want to do is add two to both sides, or all three sides rather. Um, here we go. Okay, so I've got two minus epsilon over three is less than x is less than epsilon over three plus two. Now I want to get rid of my denominator of three, so I'm going to multiply everything by three. So multiply by three, multiply by three, multiply by three, multiply by three, multiply by three. And that's going to give me six minus epsilon is less than x is, or I'm sorry, three x is less than epsilon plus six, okay? Then I could subtract six from everything, all right? And then we get negative epsilon is less than three x minus six is less than positive epsilon. And then from here, uh, what I then want to do is I can then write that as the absolute value of three x minus six is less than epsilon, okay? And even though that this isn't the exact same thing as what we started with, okay, remember this is what we started with, what I then can do is rewrite this as the absolute value of three x minus, I'm sorry, plus one minus seven, absolute value is less than epsilon, okay? And we've, and we've arrived at our answer, okay? And so what you wanna do is use this definition, set up your inequality, solve for x, okay? Um, and then turn it into the opposite in absolute value inequality here, okay? And what that will do is that will help you figure out what your delta is, all right? From there, what you want to then do is work backwards and arrive where you started. So basically, you start here and you work to achieve this. You sit, figure out what your delta is. Once you figured out delta, then you go backwards and you verify that. All right. And what they're saying is that if my delta is, um, you know, epsilon over three, then I'm guaranteed to, um, you know, be squeezed in and get a value of seven as my as my limit value. So I hope that this makes sense. Uh, please reach out if it doesn't, but uh, that's what you would want to do for these uh, epsilon delta definition problems.